Hello. So I'm going to follow on with a very similar um, presentation, really, just using a slightly different um, system for running an NHS um, teledermatology service. So I come from Devon, down in sunny Devon, where we have a high prevalence of skin cancer. We also have very good GPs with a high retention rate. And we have the same pressures as I think probably all of us have in that we are getting more and more referrals. Our population is ageing. We're getting patients quite frequently turning up to clinic in their 80s, 90s, 100-year-olds, um, more and more skin cancer, more and more pressure on physical space, as Leonard said, <coughs> and our secretarial time, the backlogs for typing letters, etc. <coughs> Um, rather than using an email-based system, our teledermatology service, which has been running for sort of five years or so now, uses the NHS e-referral, um, which used to be called Choose and Book, um, which is secure, encrypted, has some advantages over email, um, and the, the, the NHS in, in England, NHS England is hoping that we will, we will have all our referrals via NHS e-referral. Um, it is the case locally for us, but not the case everywhere in the UK, and this system isn't in Scotland um, or Wales, and may be less applicable to you from else, uh, other countries. Very similar, GP takes a photograph, often with their smartphone. Um, they upload it to um, the NHSE referral, and uh, for us in Devon, the one exclusion we have is pigmented lesions. We would prefer to see those patients in our clinics and use this service to free up space for those particularly high-risk patients, but that, that is a big debate. Um, then at our end, we can um, enter a free text reply, so we don't need our secretaries involved. Um, we can attach guidelines. We use DermNet hugely, always directing GPs to DermNet. And we can, for the patients we do need to see, we can triage them to the right clinic, and we book a lot of patients with basal cell carcinomas and sometimes squamous cell carcinomas directly to um, operating lists. We use a consent form, which is very similar to that shown in the UK um, guidelines, which does make it very clear to patients that this uh, may be limited. It's not the same as a face-to-face -face referral. And there's a little bit on there for them to sign whether they're happy for us to use the photos for teaching, just like in the Oxford service. So the, the GP would upload that as well as the photographs. Um, we get a little report from our CCG telling us which practices. Along the bottom is all the GP practices. And the ones that use it a lot are not you know, those that are geographically further away. It's very much dependent on you know, IT savvy people, um, fairly random, who, who, uh, which practices use it. I'm not intending you to read these letters. I'm just going to flash up a few examples of um, referrals. So things that might not need to come up. So we've got an, a nasty blistering pomphilix, possibly triggered by tinea. Uh, these patients can easily be managed in the community. Um, I think we'd all be happy that that's granuloma annulare, and it's just one of those things that GPs are often not particularly familiar with. Uh, very nasty pitted keratolysis. We can give very helpful information. We have an iontophoresis service for really sweaty feet, which the GPs may not know about. Um, periorbital, perioral dermatitis. We get an awful lot of that sent through. And lichen planus, an isolated patch of lichen planus. Lichen planus comes up a lot. Again, one of those things that GPs aren't that familiar with. Um, but we can give advice on some of these patients end up coming up. There's a chap from the other week with almost certainly like complainers of the nails um, who has ended up coming up for some intralesional uh, steroid injections. Uh, but recognizing that and the fact that it's scarring <coughs> is helpful. Um, this is a chap who's on methotrexate for psoriasis, uh, who the GP has been trying to clear these patches with Dovabet and potent steroids and... Um, <coughs> You know, that's clearly tinea, and it's just about getting the right, the right tests and the right treatment. Uh, this gentleman is a pa retired painter decorator. He was referred up in the summer with a sudden onset of a very airborne pattern of eczema. And I think we'd all be fairly confident that that chap would need patch testing and that li it's likely to be... Uh, a plant, plants. In this case, he lived near a bank of dandelions and daisies, and they were being cut by the council, 
and um, uh, I could triage him directly to a patch test list fairly quickly and get him sorted out. Uh, similar uh, bilateral erysipelas. I, I, most dermatologists would think, hmm, a bit odd. <laughs> so again, patch testing showed um, contact allergy to methyl isothiazolinone. Uh, just really satisfying. Um, this lady had more of a photosensitive distribution of her rash uh, with sparing under the chin. So I asked the GP to check the ANA and ENA antibodies and we could diagnose her cutaneous lupus uh, and you know, get her started on hydroxychloroquine and some topical steroids. Uh, she has eventually come up, but you, know, you can get the ball rolling and when you see the patients in clinic, they are already a little way down their journey um, and it's a bit quicker. Uh, really nasty psoriasis. Depending on how your GPs work, um, this chap, we did actually get started on acetretin in the community. If you're communicating well about side effects and uh, information leaflets, I think that works well. Um, but more severe psoriasis, again, it has a role in that we can triage that lady directly to phototherapy. We can uh, point the GP in terms of tablets that may be helpful because if she's not keen on those tablets, there's no point in her coming up. And some GPs are not aware that we can use oral propranolol for hemangiomas or topical timoptal for small ones. And the fact that if that grows, uh, then we would be putting that child on propranolol. So new treatments that GPs might not be aware of. And then sticking on the child, uh, child referrals, again, spot diagnosis. We don't need to bring this child up to clinic. There's not much else that could be in a 10-year-old uh, child. This is a bit of a Devon thing, so a picture of a teenager's thighs and a letter that says she does a lot of horse riding. So I don't know how many of you have seen this. This is uh, a cold paniculitis due to tight jobbers and you know, definitely doesn't need a deep incisional biopsy with scarring. So just keeping warm and le uh, doing less horse riding. Um, sometimes, with, sometimes with the kids, uh, you know, we, we can get non-accidental injury or self-induced injury. Um, so, you know, patterns of rashes with a letter that uh, is slightly worrying. This child actually was doing this to herself, but we can get, you know, get that rolling saying that's not a, that's not a common pattern of skin disease. Um, this is a lady with sarcoid, known to have pulmonary sarcoid, and the, the GP wondered whether the rash on her legs was erythema nodosum. But, you know, it's coming up in the scar. I thought, it's a little bit odd. It's scarring. Sarcoid shouldn't do that, but she's also got... She's also got venous disease, and the bottom ones are, have got some lipodermatosclerosis. But we could get that biopsy done in the community to show it's sarcoid and then get her on the right treatment in conjunction with her respiratory um, team. Spot diagnosis of someone with blisters on the back of their hands after a holiday in Greece. Yep, PCT, everybody's mumbling. So we could get the blood test and the urine test done in primary care without the patient having to come up. Um, we hugely use our service for skin cancer, but not, as I say, for pigmented lesions. Uh, this is a, a relatively young lady, um, and that was actually Bowen's. And again, we are lucky we can get the biopsies done in the community. We're a 38-year-old, slightly unusual. But we have huge volumes of patients with basal cell carcinomas, and we triage these patients directly onto an operating list. They, we, they get the information in the post. They're very happy. We've audited it. And that means that they can get a dedicated <coughs> slot on an operating list uh, rather than sort of see and treat clinic where they might not be, they might be hanging around for a few hours. So for us in Devon, that works well. We train the GPs to really stretch the skin. So, you know, that's a bigger BCC. It's going to need a bilobe flap probably. Um, but even that, if you write the letter in a good way to the patient, then it works yeah. Lower leg difficult, we know that's a tumour. Is it a BCC? Is it an SCC? We would triage that patient directly to um, a 31 day in the UK within four weeks. That would come out. BCC, SCC, can you say? That was a basal cell, but that's a squamous cell. So, you know, in doubt, we obviously triage quickly. And then just a word of warning for... This was an example of what we see on the screen. A lot of our patients have a lot of skin tumours, 
And the advantage for us when we see people in clinic is we offer to do a total skin <coughs> screen, which you obviously don't have when you're doing teledermatology. So we very much advertise the services. You know, only use it if you only want that area looked at. This is a chap with lots of basal cell carcinomas and lots of actinic damage. When I listed him for that, when he came up for the surgery, uh, he's got a big melanoma on his back and about 10 other basal cell carcinomas. So it's really important uh, that you think about that whole body examination. And uh, superficial basal cell carcinomas, we see a lot, uh, which the GPs think of psoriasis or eczema. Uh, beautiful pictures. Uh, erosive pustular dermatosis. This chap, we cleared him up. We asked the GP to use some potent steroid or dermabate. And when he came up, all of that had cleared, all of it, including the lump that looks like a squamous cell. Um, but he had a lentiga maligna off the picture. So um, we don't promote it for pigmented lesions because we personally don't want to take the risk in our department. Most of our GPs don't have dermatoscopes. Uh, but if we have a referral of a barn door melanoma, obviously we will list that patient directly for surgery. Um, you know, this is a lentiga maligna, but you know, without a dermoscopic image, is that a flat seborrheic keratosis, a bit like John's pictures, really difficult. Um, so we did list that gentleman for biopsy. So our figures are, I guess, similar. If, well, what we've done is looked at the NHS numbers of patients that have come through teledermatology and then the six months afterwards to see how many in that six months, rather than just you know, on the day, have come through the department. So uh, almost two-thirds don't appear in our department within six months. Um, we put about 20% of patients, uh, we end up seeing about 20% of patients, but I don't know whether that is all clearly related to their teledermatology. So if anything, that may be an overestimate. And then we, about 10 to 15% of our patients are booked directly for surgery because they have to come up uh, according to national guidance. So it's a, and then some others are seen in the community. Most are sent with photographs, but sometimes the GPs just use it for advice. Um, and the photos are really, really good quality without any training. Most of the GPs, I believe, are using their smartphones. Uh, we very rarely get a poor quality, and the GPs will soon learn because they are paying for the, you know, paying for the referral. Um, we don't have the same volume as the Oxford service, and that may be because it is much easier via an email. Than, um, and we have the same worries about opening up too easy access, but our tariff is similar. Um, so we have equivalent of about a clinic a week. We've constantly been approached by other areas nearby, but at the moment, we, in, just in terms of capacity, we don't have the capacity to really expand it. And it works better, we believe, in, a, in your local area. Um, we have a three-day turnaround. Um, we usually do do it within a day. Um, and um, as I say, it's, it, well, as we've been mentioned, the, the educational element is huge. We have a huge Im image bank. We also do, do talks regularly in the evening and at lunchtime and with our registrars. Around a third of the normal tariff is what we have negotiated with our commissioners. Um, but, you know, the, the huge advantage is there's no costs. There's no costs. You're freeing up space. Uh, um, there's no setup costs and you're freeing up nurse and secretarial time. I think the pitfalls for us, uh, for, our, for us personally, we feel it's controversial for melanoma and you have to be very careful um, in terms of not being able to compare. But in many cases, it, it does work well if you can uh, equip your GPs with dermatoscopes. Um, Medical legally, the responsibility remains with the GPs, but the way you word your reply is based on these images and um, a really clear pathway if things don't work out, how they get the patient into the hospital. And really important to incorporate it into the job plan because it's, you know, you could go up and up and up otherwise. So we say about 25 to 30 cases would be equivalent to a face-to-face -face clinic for, you know, between three and four hours and compliant with the UK standards. And uh, GP feedback is, as, as the other services, um, really positive. They really do like this service. And the, the NHSE referral at the moment is under a, it's really being advanced to help uh, this kind of um, teledermatology and other advice and guidance services. Um, so there are workshops going on at the moment uh, in, uh, with NHS England. 
Um, so just to summarise, I think this fits also well in, as Saul mentioned, there are some teledermatology, some uh, mobile device guidelines that many of us are working on um, that will also help clarify um, storage of images with phones, etc. Um, and you know, this is a supplemental service for us. It's not yet seen our overall referral rate, referral rate go down, partly because our population is ageing, but it's a really useful um, supplement to have, and you can, as has been said, do it from home remotely. And this is our team at Glastonbury doing our mole checks. Uh, so I'll finish on that note. Thank you.